My name is Lily Passero, and I'm from Los Angeles, California. The opportunity to audition for The Voice came at a time in my life where I didn't really have that many other things going on, and actually my, uh, my parents heard about it before I did, and they brought it to me and said, you have to do this. Uh, it's such a great opportunity. What have you got to lose, you know? And uh, I kind of, I w it was at a moment where I was embracing kind of just jumping into an adventure. So um, I hadn't planned it, it just kind of popped up and I went with it. I've been singing my entire life for as long as I can remember. Uh, Definitely since I was in preschool, I would get up on the lunch tables and sing for all my teachers. And I was raised in a musical house, so I think I have been singing for as long as I've been speaking. I think they, I, I think maybe he saw an email about um, open calls, something of that nature, and uh, and then passed it on to me. And, you know, my parents believe in me so much. They're so supportive. They believe in me more than I believe in myself a lot of the time. And they just wanted me to, um, to jump and not be scared and, and take the opportunity to grow and be better and have something exciting come out of my talents and my passion. I'm a waitress. I graduated college in 2012 and I've been living in LA since then. I grew up in LA and I went away to school and then I came back after I graduated. Yeah, um, aside from, you know, working in the restaurant, I have a lot, basically everyone in my life is creative in some way, uh, whether they're writers or musicians or singers or actors. I'm also an actor, so um, I'm constantly, um, in engaging in, in creative uh, projects, whether it's a short film or a piece of theater or recording an album or singing uh, at a show or a music festival. I'm just constantly participating in anything creative I possibly can. This experience has been really great because it requires constant professionalism and I, you know, nothing we're doing is super crazy um, or, you know, I, I don't want to say that it's, it's demanding, but you do have to be constantly focused and constantly ready to go to be able to do whatever is asked of you. And I love having something to get up every day for that happens to be something that I'm passionate about and that I love. You know, sometimes you're asked to do things and it's kind of a pain in the butt to do it, but when it's related to this, it, I don't even think about it. I can't, of course I'll do it because it means I get to do that. You know, of course I'll do A and B because A and B leads to C and C is singing on a stage in front of the world. Um, and being surrounded by so many other super talented people My blind audition was a breakthrough for me. I've always been, I've always struggled with insecurity and self-doubt and uh, my mind has, has uh, a habit of running away with itself. Uh, you know, you overthink a situation and suddenly you've found you've shot yourself in the foot and you're holding yourself back. And with the experience of the blind, I finally got to a place where I realized I couldn't possibly be any more prepared than I already was. I had done absolutely everything I could do to prepare for that moment. And I couldn't be nervous anymore. And I almost said to myself, how, how, how could you possibly be nervous? How dare you be nervous right now? This is an opportunity and a moment to experience something you've always wanted to experience and you only get one first, one first big moment, you know, one first, I've never done this before. The first time you achieve a dream. And I knew if I didn't soak in every bit of joy in that moment that I would regret it.
And in realizing that, I was able to walk into the situation more excited than I've ever been in my entire life. So, uh, you know, obviously there is the element of a chair turning around for you because that means you get to be on the show and continue the journey and continue the adventure. Um, but I knew if I focused on that, it would be another example of me shooting myself in the foot. Uh, so all I was thinking about was giving a great performance for everybody who was there. That was my goal. That was what I really, really wanted to do was give the best performance I possibly could because the two scenarios, if I achieve that, the two scenarios would be I get a chair turn or I don't, but at least I did the best I possibly could. So I'm singing the song and I'm, I'm giving it my all and all of a sudden I hear cheering and I go, oh my God, that must mean somebody turned around. Oh my God. And I forced myself not to look because I knew, I knew it would pull me out if I looked. I knew it would give me some sort of rush of adrenaline that might shake me out of the song or something. I just, my head started going, you know. And finally I said, okay, you got to look. Now it's obvious that you're purposely not looking. So I turned to look and it was Blake. And at first I just thought, hey, wow, that's so cool. I got a chair turn. And then it went, oh my God, I'm going to be on the show. You know, all you need is one chair turn. And that means you get to go forward and continue the journey. And then I realized, and then I heard the cheering again. And I realized, oh my gosh, someone else must have turned around. And I look and I see it's Gwen. <laughs> and I go, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I got two chair turns. And then you keep singing, you know, where am I in the song? You keep going, you know, you keep focusing on, on, on what you're giving to the audience. And then I hear the cheering again and I go, oh my God, he turned, oh my God, Alicia Keys turned around, <laughs> you know. I mean, all of this is running through your head and you just can't believe it and you're so excited. I mean, it's, it's a moment of, of pure exhilaration and, and adrenaline rushing through your whole body. You kind of feel like you're floating. It's, uh, it's surreal. Well, so, um, you know, obviously you think about it ahead of time and then once you're in the moment, any, any thoughts you might have had about who you were going to go with kind of go out the window because you're suddenly standing right in front of them and looking them in the face and, and there's a, suddenly a new dynamic, you know. I never would have thought that I would pick, um, for example, Blake Shelton, but I'm looking at him and he's standing right there and I go, well, maybe I would. I mean, he's just, look at, he's right there and he's so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's so nice, maybe I should pick him. And then Alicia starts talking and you go, oh my God, Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys wants me to be on her team. I mean, and she's someone I really relate to musically and, and um, in a lot of ways, I feel like I relate to what she believes in and what she stands for. And, um, and, then, and then Gwen starts talking and you go, oh my gosh, absolutely, I agree with everything you're saying too. And at the end of the day, you, you have to go with your gut. And then, of course, I mean, Alicia Keys made it. After all three of them had pitched, Alicia jumped back up again and started singing to me. She made up a song on the spot telling me that I had to pick her. I wish, I can't wait to see the episode because I can't remember what the song even was. <laughs> I can't remember what she said, but I remember it started with, Oh, Lily. And I just was, what's happening right now? What is happening? And I kept looking to the side at my family going, is this happening right now? What do I do? I wanted them to tell me what to do. I mean, by the end of that, Adam hit the nail on the head and went, you know, I think we all know who you're going to pick. So she made it impossible, but... Um, it was what I always wanted anyway, so. Although I've been singing my whole life, um, it was always sort of an, uh, an effortless extension of me in, in the sense that I, I just, I sang in a, in, a, in a carefree sort of way and I never really, I never took it very seriously. I was certainly never competitive about it. Um, any kind of competitive environment made me uncomfortable. So I think there are areas of my voice and aspects of myself as a performer that could use some breaking in. And this is such a perfect opportunity to work on those things because 
you're getting up and singing and performing all of the time. So you can kind of iron out and stretch out and break in these kinks and these parts of yourself that you shouldn't really be thinking about, you know? And once I break them in, I can just comfortably wear myself and be myself and not feel distracted by uh, these little outer edges.